War itself is monstrous, but what if there were actual monsters during wartime? Would they help? Would they hinder? Would they join in? Would they be on our side or our enemies? Well, we have some stories that prove there may have been actual monsters sticking their tentacles into various wars. These are five terrifying wartime monsters. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. That being said, let's begin. Huh? Hmm. Hmm. Number 5. The Congo Snake Monsters in Wartime is a fascinating visual. It's why Hellboy works. And no, not that recent film, the original comics by Mike Mignola. I know I shouldn't be wasting valuable video time by rambling on about somebody else's work, but seriously, check out the original Mike Mignola Hellboy comics. They're awesome. And part of that awesomeness is the blend of monster fiction and wartime aesthetics. Great big monsters punching Nazis in the face? Yes, please. But what if it's not just horror fiction that's blended with wartime? What if it's also horror fact. What we have for you today is a list of stories, some caught on camera and others told as tales by soldiers, concerning monsters who got involved in battle shenanigans. Our first story is that of the legendary Congo Snake. Colonel Remy Van Leerd was a Belgian pilot who became well known for his historic exploits during World War II. Among other feats, Van Leerd escaped from a German prisoner of war camp and made it safely to Britain, where he became an ace in the Royal Air Force. What a badass. But he also claims to have come face to face with an actual proper monster. Normally, when somebody says they've seen a monster, you might laugh them off. But this is one dude who warrants respect. Naturally, his monster sighting was taken seriously, and people still took talk about it to this day. His famous monster sighting came years after he joined the Air Force when he was just returning from a mission in the Congo. According to Van Leerd, he was flying over the jungle in a helicopter when he spotted a giant snake. And there are snakes that are big, of course there are, but this snake wasn't just big, this snake was monstrously big. Remy didn't parachute down and measure the thing, even he's not that much of a badass, but his estimation put the long thing at a whopping 15 meters or 50 feet. Color-wise, he's quoted as saying that the snake was very dark green with a white stomach. But the snake was no peaceful monster, like Dr. Frankenstein's creation. It wasn't on our side, like the aforementioned Hellboy. According to Van Leerd's account, the serpent even lunged right for the helicopter. He, a uh, Van Leerd, not the snake, claims the snake reared up as if it was planning to attack the helicopter head on. Very fortunately, the copter was nowhere near close enough to the ground, and the colossal snake ultimately didn't bother. As all hardcore cryptozoology fans will let you know, Van Leerd even managed to snap a photo of the snake, and said image has become an all-time classic among fans of all things cryptid-themed. Unfortunately, the picture is fairly blurry and doesn't provide anything to indicate the scale, so it can't be used as proof that the snake really was that enormous. But still, Van Leerd stuck to his guns, insisting that the monster was a true giant and could easily have eaten up a man if it had wanted to. Given how respected Van Leerd is, the photo has continued to be used as evidence of potential monsters on Earth for decades. So we find ourselves facing two questions. One, was it real? Two, if so, is it still real? Time for the star topic. Talking about war monsters made us go to the internet and look through some of the most interesting ones and take a look at what we found. A very real photograph of what seems to be a terrifying looking monster that was found washed ashore. And guess what? It was found during the years of World War II. Wow, maybe they were using it to help fight in the war. That's a theory we will definitely not discard. What do you think? Comment down below with the hashtag star topic and we will pin the comment with the best answer. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 4. The Brosno Dragon Located around 400 kilometers or 250 miles south of Moscow, Lake Brosno is a moderately sized but surprisingly deep body of water with a big reputation. According to legend, a fearsome horde of Tatar horsemen were on their way to sack the city of Novgorod when they decided to stop for a nice rest by the lake. Everyone was having a lovely time until a huge reptilian monster suddenly lunged out of the water and began attacking both men and horses. If war wasn't bad enough already, now huge reptilian monsters are getting involved. Naturally, the Tatars took the dragon attack as something of a bad sign, and if a giant reptile attacked you, you'd think it was a bad sign too, right? 
The Tatars, as you might expect, decided to leave Novgorod alone and just go home instead. And their encounter with the Brosno Dragon was only the beginning. Stories about the monster continued for years and years, long beyond wartime. From that initial event, the Brosno Dragon grew to be Russia's very own Loch Ness Monster. It's taken so seriously as a potential threat that in 2002, a Russian UFO group organized an expedition to take sonar readings of the lake. They even had something of a success, reporting a huge jelly-like mass lying just above the lake bed. Upon discovering the so-called jelly-like mass, they did what all sensible people would do. They threw a bomb at it. But following the explosion, nothing surfaced. Did they kill the legendary Brosno dragon of war times, or did they scare it off? Some Soviet skeptics have suggested scientific scenarios for supposedly solving the serpent's sightings. For example, it's possible that hydrogen sulfide occasionally builds up at the bottom of the lake and rushes to the surface, creating an eruption of bubbles that might be mistaken for an underwater creature. Alternatively, a volcanic fracture at the bottom of the lake might eject similar gases. But there are still many, many Russians convinced that the Brosno dragon is very much real and may still be out there. To this day, people often capture footage in Russian waters that they think is the Brosno dragon. The footage we're showing you is one of the more recent sightings. What do you think? Is this strange snake-like creature bobbing in the icy waters of Russia the real Brosno dragon? And is it the same dragon from wartime? We suspect it might be. And of course, we have to wonder, should we be scared of the Brosno dragon? Number three. The Hound of Mons. In 1919, a number of Oklahoma newspapers published a terrifying story from a Canadian World War I veteran named Captain F.J. Newhouse. Oh my. According to Newhouse, Allied soldiers in the trenches at Mons had found themselves hunted by a terrifying beast. If enemy soldiers weren't enough, now beasts described as terrifying are getting in on the action? Horrifying. Just horrifying. It all started in 1914, when Captain Yeskis of the London Fusiliers took four soldiers out into no man's land on patrol. When they didn't return, their comrades were obviously concerned and came to the conclusion that they might have been intercepted by the Germans. Already, that's terrifying, but the reality of the situation was even more gruesome. Days later, their dead bodies were found, and they were far more than just dead. It was clear that their bodies had been dragged ferociously as if by an animal. And making things all the more terrifying was that each of the bodies had horrific bite marks across the throat. We know the Germans could be a little intense during both world wars, but that seems a little too much. From that point on, things only got worse. Terrible howls echoed across the landscape, and soldiers reported seeing strange movements beyond the barbed wire. Something significantly horrific was going down. Patrols into no man's land would be found horribly mauled as if by some great beast. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the creature seemed to disappear again. The story of the Hounds of Mons reached a horrific conclusion. Gottlieb Hochmuller, a German scientist, was killed in a Berlin riot toward the end of the war. Once dead, people were able to go through his private papers. If recounts of what was found can be believed, the papers supposedly revealed a dastardly plot to transfer a madman's brain into a giant Siberian wolfhound, which was subsequently released into No Man's Land. This was part of a series of experiments which Hochmuller hoped would end the war in Germany's favor. I mean, that's literally the plot of a Hellboy comic. Personally, we can't wrap our head around this logic. He thought a giant dog could win the war? I mean, fair enough. It sounds like the dark Pixar film we've all been waiting for, so that's something. Number two, the Moorbach Monster. The quaint little town of Whitlick in Germany is home to a rather infamous and peculiar legend. But if the stories of US soldiers are to be believed, it is far from just a legend. So what are the stories that the US soldiers tell? Uh, don't worry, I'm not asking you, I'm gonna tell you. If the US soldiers who were stationed in the area are to be believed, a deserter from Napoleon's army found his way into the town where he attacked and murdered a local farmer and his wife. Charming. However, before the farmer's wife drew her last breath, she cast a curse on the feral soldier, turning him into a monstrous wolf. Even more charming. 
Mad with rage, the soldier, now in wolf mode, rampaged through the countryside until a mob of townsfolk hunted it down and killed it. And to be fair, if you saw a rampaging wolf monster attack in your land, you'd probably grab a pitchfork as well. It's a well-known story in American culture. As all you fans of ball catching will know, there's even an American football team called the Moorbach Monsters. Stories of the actual monster have gone on for decades. American servicemen stationed at the nearby Han Air Base during the Cold War saw a mysterious Curious wolf-like creature while patrolling the forested edges of the base. Was it the very same wolf monster of legend? Logic would suggest so. According to two anonymous accounts collected by the University of Pittsburgh, military policemen investigating a perimeter alarm stumbled upon a dog-like animal which stood up on its hind legs and looked at them. The creature then took three long leaping steps and jumped over a high fence. The accounts differ on the exact height of the fence but agree that it was taller than a man. The beast then disappeared in to the forest. A sniffer dog was brought in, but it went berserk with fear, refusing to track the creature. Crikey. Matthias Bergard, an anthropologist from the University of Mainz, was intrigued by the plethora of stories, and so he began collecting several other stories from U.S. servicemen who claimed to have had odd encounters with animals in the woods. One airman said that he had been stalked by a hidden, howling beast while walking his dogs. Another witness rejected the theory that the Americans might have been startled by local wild hogs, saying, I grew up on a farm in the USA, and this was no hog. So what do you think? Was the Moorbach monster real, and did it get involved during war times? Number one, Nazis. Yeah, we went there. Which of these monsters would you least like to bump into? And if you were a soldier who encountered a monster, would you face it or run away? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.